Bonsoir Thomas. Thomas Pano. Thank you so much. Well, first, I'm so sorry I'm going to take a bit of your time before the Frogans Award. So one question. How come the web, as we know it today, is irreplaceable? Well, just because everyone knows how to use it and because it's used on a massive scale. Why do we all know how to use it? Well, because in its days, and even today, there, there were resources made available. No, my slides are not ready, apparently. So just because back in the days, resources make it, made it possible for everyone to take ownership of the um, technology. Specifications were made available publicly, but everyone had to be able to use the technology without having to read uh, specifications, which sometimes were a bit compl complex. Today, when you want to uh, communicate, when you want to create something, you and if you want to publish online, you need to use technology and you need to use the HTML, TSS, and if you're a bit more complex, you use JavaScript and PSP and all that jazz. But to achieve that today, I think there is a very small minority of people who would read the specifications as such. They use resources, and these are the resources we're going to talk about because in the Frogan's technology, we have just the same approach, meaning that we want, okay, we create, we develop resources, but we wish other resources are developed by the community. So in the resources that we make available on the website, there is um, charters, legal charters, uh, specifications, videos, presentations, and right now we are actually creating a resource because it's videoed. And what we think is important is that these resources are used and disseminated. This video that we are uh, currently shooting and that we are going to screen later, well, it's important for the community for people to use extracts to create their own resources. Therefore, in our approach, we've provided for this possibility in the charter of Frogan technology users, there is a specific section for resource creation. So I'm not going to give you a detailed presentation of the charter, that would be too long, but there are some rules in order to use the resources in the appropriate conditions. So to start with, you need to quote your sources. That's an overall rule on the internet. You need to say who, where the resources you use come from, and you need to set up a link to the web page where you found these resources. So a link to OP3FT, or any other place where you potentially found the documents and, uh, and the files and everything else. The objective being to avoid any confusion because we don't want to misunderstand the Frogan's project as it is published and as it's made available by OP3FT and the different projects made available by third parties, <coughs> whatever they may be. So, in the rules, of course, you can create all sorts of resources. You can disseminate all sorts of resources. One major block being you don't want to create or disseminate software having the same role as the Frogan player. That's the red line, because that's going to make sure that for all users, they use the Frogan's player that was secured by OP3FT and that it's not um, in a pirate or downgraded version. 
Once you've created these resources, whatever they may be, you can use them. And there again, with OP3FT, we wanted to be as open as possible because everyone can use their resources that they created the way they want. It can be uh, free, it can be a commercial version. Do you owe no money to OP3FT? The resources that we publish are open source and with the provision you observe the conditions about copyrights, etc., etc. But once these rules are observed, anybody can use the resource if they created without saying anything to OP3FT and without having to pay anything to OP, OP3FT. That's uh, available for the community. So on a voluntary basis, you can also contribute. So if uh, you create a resource which uh, could be of interest to the Frogan's technology, you may contribute and in that case, your contribution will be part of OP3FT and will be part of Frogan's technology as such. And then, last but not least, before I move on to a practical case with regards to the brands, like the Frogan's brand, because that's the word we've been using so far. When you create a resource, you may mention the brand, Frogan's, no problem, as long as it's a legitimate use. If you talk about it in a blog, in a video, you're just talking about the brand, no problem. But if in your project you are willing to use, in terms of legal use of the brand, there is a slightly more comprehensive charter that's going to be drafted, but it's important you make a request for a license to use the brand. It's going to be free of charge, don't worry. But all you need to do is send us an email and say, I want to use the Frogan's brand for a directory, for instance. And I'm now going to call Mr. Delacroix, who is going to tell us about his directory, and he is going to tell us what kind of name he wants to use that includes the Frogan's brand. Thanks, Thomas. So I'm Jérôme Delacroix from Smart Worlds. We are a marketing agency, and I've been working with the Frogan's project for many years already. And as Frogan sites are going to be available soon for the public at large, I thought, okay, let's try and help users to find all potential material about the Frogan's technology, because you said these resources were available, but we need to find them. So that's why I set up an online directory of all available resources. In the past, these were things that you would find on the web, but... Uh, since a few hours ago, you can also use this directory. So I had this uh, idea of calling it the Frogan's directory. It's not a very original name, but it's a description. So I talked to the legal guys of OP3FT, and the answer was, yes, you can. So let me show you what this is about. So it's Frogan's dash directory Dot com, not yet available on Google, because I wanted to uh, save the um, to save it for you. So it's http dot dot frogans directory dot com. That's it. So everything frogans. That's a slogan because the website aims at being an exhaustive directory of all resources available about the Frogan's technology. So on the home page you see that you have two major categories, Frogan sites and websites. In the websites you have all the resources published on the web about the technology, whether conferences, contracts, rules and, and courses, tutorials, gltd.frogans, 
all service providers through which you can uh, register uh, Frogan's address. So in the Frogan's addresses and networks, we have eight sites, Com Laude, Save Brands, a certain number. And for each of these, you have a short description with a, sc a screenshot, short description, and the link that you can use to access the site. Below, you have additional sites that can be of interest to you. It's a bit like Amazon, really. And it's also possible for you to drop a comment or to leave notes and to give you a score about the ease of access of the site, etc. So here are the Frogan sites that are available in different ca categories. You have sites about beauty, about children. So you see, th there are quite a few categories already. E-commerce, demos, tomorrow we'll have games, like the chess game that we saw before. You also have personal sites, etc., etc. So from this site, frogans-directory.com, this is the gate for you, the gateway for you to explore everything that's available either on the web or within the Frogans uh, world. Thank you very much indeed. So, you see that you have a directory available with all the available resources. I said you are allowed to use these resources to create yours and extend the system. So now I am relying on you. You in the room, you remote via the computer, but to make the Frogan's technology something as important as the World Wide Web.